أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين إنه خير ناصر ومعين صلى الله على آل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحنا وجسمنا في ذاك يا مولانا يا صاحب الأسر والزمان اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Now we have reached the fourth night. It is very difficult to understand how nights fly by. That means that the lessons which we learn, what we learn from these special nights are very special. And if we don't use the different days and nights, it is like a waste. I hope you all feel the same. So again, we are here, my dearest friend and brother, Mu'alim Imran Ali. Very nice to see you today. Good to see you again. Excellent, excellent. So what do we have? So today is a, a very powerful uh, topic today. Because I think if, if we take this on board and actually think about what our discussion is going to be today, it can change our life. Mm. And that is to ultimately, uh, the goal of tonight is to make sure and understand that we can never give up in life uh, and that if we follow the right process and the right path then we can achieve success and phenomenal success Absolutely. but before we uh, go into that uh, one thing that we need to bear in mind is and to think about is how much potential we have in ourselves you know a lot of times we I've, I've seen so many successful people for example, and say, oh, he was, uh, he was gifted in his talent. That's why he could do that. He was, uh, we see so many uh, Noha Khan, they're gifted. I say they're gifted with their voice. That's why they can do all of these recordings and recite so much. Um, or someone who can play uh, football really well. He was blessed with good feet. But actually, that's not the case. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all of us with tremendous potential yeah. and uh, and it, the people that have done well and are achieving success the only difference between me and them is that they have used that potential they have accessed that potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with so one important lesson that I should bear in mind is when I'm looking up to people I should not be jealous of them Asant, very good point it's I should not be thinking bad thoughts or try to bring them down. In fact, I should work on it the other way. Yeah. Be jealous in a positive way. Yeah. Envious, I would say, right? Use that as a push for me to be able to improve. Because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with a the voice. He's blessed me with a the voice. Uh, they have just practiced and, and uh, used their voice much, much better. All I have to do is start practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, go up. Uh, ask them how they've done it and try and implement that. Just the way we've learned over the th past three nights, uh, just different ways of becoming better and becoming Husseini. Now we have to implement that. So that same way. And I feel that uh, there was something interesting that I heard the other day. And it was that uh, this person was saying, why do these successful people, uh, wh why are they so successful and I'm not successful? We all have 24 hours in the day. It's not that they have more hours to be able to achieve more. It's what they make out of those 24 hours wow. that makes them who they are. So that really got me thinking. Mm. Like, you know, as in, it's the small, small things that I can try so and improve. They're very on. particular, yeah? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's making them, for, so trying and understanding that we are special in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand. Very, very special. And then we make the most of it, right? Excellent, excellent. But you know, but sometimes things don't go our way. True. How do we? How should we think in that way? Then? So when things don't go our way, it's it's important to note that that's what makes life fun, right? If things, if everything went away, then life would be boring. I would, I would feel. Yeah. I, I, you need those like a roller coaster. Why is it fun? Because yeah. you're going up and down, up and down. If it was just straight up, then I don't think it would be fine. I don't think we would see so many cues at that. It's, uh, it's a very good, uh, interesting point. Like, you know, like me, I love roller coasters. <laughs> That's correct. 
But you're right, like when I go really down, if I don't go down to the valley, how can I then feel the other peak? Exactly. It's all about being prepared for those <laughs> things. Asad, I, I like your examples, they're very good. <laughs> I know all my friends are also liking them. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's important. I think that has helped me in life, like, mm -hmm. a lot. In the sense that, you know, with every down, there'll be a high. And with every yes. high, there'll be a down. So, you need to live in the moment, not... Uh, over worry or over celebrate because you know this is life right we've come to this life as a test and then ultimately once we pass this test and once we react in the best of ways during this test then we achieve the ultimate success so is there a connection between these ups and downs and difficulties with Imam with Imam Hussein yes Islam? of course I think um, uh, ultimately um, we know that Imam Hussein and, and, the, and the companions and, and the family went through a lot, yeah. uh, a lot of difficulty. And we remind ourselves this every single year that the amount of tribulation, I think what we hear is nowhere near enough of what they went through. Oh. I honestly believe that. And we hear so much, but yeah. you still believe, think that yeah. it's, wow. And, and I feel that sometimes I, so oh, during month of Muharram and Safar, yes, we are constantly in Majalis and constantly. But throughout the year, it's important to remember this because when we're going through our downs uh, and when we think, oh man, life is tough and I don't think anyone is going through this. I think it's important to note and important to remember that there were quite a few people uh, in the, on the plains of Karbala that went through all of it. Mm. Not only in the plains of Karbala, but all the Imams, we hear the torture that they went through. And still an amazing uh, level that they've reached in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how much success that they've reached that even till today we are remembering them. It's a living miracles, yeah? So it's living miracles, but also it's something that we can achieve as well. To be able to uh, tap into that potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made for us. Not to always be sad that oh, life is difficult for me. If I nice. change that mindset, people, inshallah, will remember me in hundreds of years down so, the line as well. Very good point. Do you think that our lives can change with Imam Hussein? For sure, for sure. It's, if it doesn't change, then there's something wrong with us, not with Imam Hussein or not with the rest. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> think about our own responsibilities very true. and how we can use Imam Hussein. Very but it true. is we who need to... Go on to that ship, the exactly. boat of salvation. Yeah? Yes, the ark of salvation. Ah, and Asant. I think there's so many stories and so many different uh, aspects of the story of Imam Hussein that can um, just if, for me, one part of the story of Imam Hussein would, uh, would uh, help me. Uh, for another person, another part of the story. Yeah. And I'm interested to see what story you have for us okay. today. I have, I have a story. It's about when things are really tough but then the Imam comes and helps. So there is one famous incident, because this is a real incident. It's recorded, actually written down. So it's not from your imagination. No, 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 no. I've got many imaginary <laughs> stories, but this one, this one is a real one, yeah? There was like, you, do you know like, there is a term for those who are the servants of the Haram. Yeah, they call khuddam, yeah, and that's the plural of khadim, ahsan. So those were, you've seen them with those special, special colored, you know, dusters, yeah, <laughs> where they say, or in, in Iraq they say with some Arabic words, but these are the khuddam, the servants. And they are like, they had a, this is an interesting incident, one of the khuddam is saying this. They had uh, a chit-chat, basically, a break, and they were joking and things. I said, that day we were joking too much. It was very, very sincere when he said this. Slowly a man came, entered the gates of the haram. You know, Imam Rudha alayhi salam said, so this is in Mashhad. One man entered, but he had one of those zimmer frames, you know, where you, he couldn't walk properly. And his, you know, feet, they were bent and the legs and knees were bent. He was slowly, slowly, slowly walking. And he then went to these khudam and he says, Shumamidunin un sutun khujahas, do you know where the pillar is? They say, well, we've got many pillars here, min minarets here. 
Say, no, I've heard that there is one minaret where the imam is inside. There is a minaret where he is inside. So they laughed because they thought this is a, some kind of a joke here. He says, let's give him a joke back. So he said, Bale, Bale, unjust. It's over there, that minaret. And they pointed towards it. And this poor man, he started walking towards that minaret, slowly, slowly, with his frame. And he entered. And they saw him going in there. And time passed by, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Slowly, slowly, they were thinking, you know, they got nervous. You know when you've done something bad? Mm -hmm. Then the time starts, you know, you really yeah. feel it, yeah? You shouldn't do something bad. Then this man who said that it's over there, and he's the same who narrated it. He said, I got nervous and I started going towards the emir. And he said, hello, hello, where are you? And I saw the stairs, the staircase going up. And I went up and I couldn't see. And everyone got scared what's going on. And there was a commotion outside this mineral. Suddenly, this man who went in with that Zimmer frame up there is running down the staircase. Oh, wow. He says, what's happened to you? He says, I met the Imam. Imam Rada alayhi salam cured me. Why did I choose this example? Well, I chose this example because this man who had polio, polio is a disease, in those days, you couldn't, you have to basically cure it from childhood. It was a difficult time, but he had hope in the Imam. And others were only laughing at his belief. Mm. We should not laugh. We should always believe that Imam can solve anyone's problem. True. Right. And do you know they went and checked in the hospital records? This is like a side note. Actually, he had polio. The doctors had written it up. This is all documented. And then next day he doesn't have it. Hello. Yeah? So tonight I, we will need to speak about another person who actually his life changed completely. Is none other than that amazing man called Hur. Let us go to the path of Imam al Hussein. He goes towards Kufa. But Huru stops him. He says, Imam Hussein, you cannot pass here. Imam Hussein says, then let me go back to Medina. He says, no, I have orders. You are not allowed to go. Then let me go to another place. He says, yes, I will let you go to another place. Later on, Hur meets Imam Hussein again. And he says, you cannot go to this place. Say, but you told me I can go. Say, no, I have my new orders. Then Imam al Hussein is forced to be around the area of Karbala. Now the ninth night and the day has come. And the babies and the children crying for thirst with thirsty lips and cries. And Hur then start pacing left and right, forward and backward. They're saying, Hur, you are the greatest of generals. How come you are so nervous? He says, I'm going between Jannah and Jahannam, between fire and paradise. How come that is? He said, because I know who is in Jannah. On the day of Ashura, suddenly he breaks from the ranks. He goes towards Imam al Hussein and everyone is looking. Everyone is looking. Imagine that you take the path of Imam Hussein. Everyone looks at her and he goes towards Imam al Hussein and he says to him, Wa ta'ibun ta'ala, fahal tarani min tawbah. Is this person allowed to have tawbah? He asks Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein says, Of course you are. This is a lesson for us all. Anytime we have a problem, Imam Hussein can accept us. And then he goes out on the battlefield because Hur wants to fight for Imam Hussein. And he goes out there and he falls and he falls. Imam al Hussein reaches him and he says, Anta hurrun kama sammatka ummak. 
Hurran fi dunya wal akhira. Your mother gave you the right name. You are the free man in this world and the akhira. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Muhammad wa ali Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Can you bet to hear the story of an orphan child whose beloved father looked at her so tender and mild. Now she lays all by herself Nobody there by her shrine Put your heads down Let me take you to a different time Take me away from this world And to heaven's door I want to be with you Baba forevermore Baba come back to me Baba 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 How can I live in this world without you Baba why did we come to this land of Karbobala? What does it mean, Baba? What does it mean when they say I'm an orphan now? They say the daughter of Hussein has no father now. What did I do? Where are you? Please come back, Baba. Don't leave me here in this place, take me home, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Come back and see what they did to your girl, Baba. They slapped my face and they burnt my little dress, Baba. They burnt our tents and they stole all of our things, Baba. They took my veil and they ripped my earrings, Baba. They beat my hearts and they chained my sajjad, Baba. They have no shame and no heart. They're so cruel, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. A Moabas will bring water from the banks of Farad. This is his word and I know he won't break my heart. Where is he now, Baba? How can we stay apart? Why has he not returned? Where is my Amu, Baba? If my Abbas was here, Take me, Baba. Where is his flag? Why does it not fly anymore, Baba? Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, where is Ali Asigre? Where did you take him to? Baba, his lips were so dry, but he could not tell you. And yet he smiled as he went to the battlefield. Our mother's pain is so deep, it will never heal. She said they shot him through the neck. Why, oh, why, Baba? What could a six-month little child do to them, Baba? Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. There was no hand to hold walking across the desert. You were not there to hold me and to quench my thirst. There was no kiss to soothe me, Baba, when I was hurt. To wipe my tears, Baba, I could not find your shirt. 
I look for you, but I can't see you anywhere. But then I see your head carried up on a spear. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, come back to me, Baba. Baba, this grief that I saw in my auntie's eyes was like a night with no moon, only dark in sky. And when they raised the whole moon, she cried out in shame. How can I show my boss that I have no bell? Baba, all day she took care of our family. And every night in her prayer she cried silently Baba come back to me Baba Baba come back to me Baba Baba my eyes desire and my tears they flow Baba I see the birds they are all flying home Will I be free? Maybe I'll wake and see your head on a plate and scream.